Hello and welcome to the PMC podcast where PMC stands for Project Management Conversations. Hands on project management. That's one thing that stood out to me about our guest today. We have Joe with us who comes with over two decades of project management experience in the finance and tech industries. Thank you for joining us, Joe. I really appreciate it. And I really like to read project management related articles just to keep myself up to date with what's happening in the industry. And I recently came across an article by Joe where he was talking about the return to office and how uh, the employers might have sort of blown this opportunity. And that's what uh, we'll be discussing today. To start with, uh, Joe, can you explain why hybrid work is causing such a stir and why so many employers out there are struggling with their return to office, the RTO policies? Yes, I can. Uh, they, they had valid reasons to bring people into the office to start a hybrid approach rather than just most people for a long time have been just working from home, working remotely uh, from somewhere, not going into the office. But employers uh, wanted to bring them into the office for two major reasons. Mm -hmm. One is to this um, uh, feeling of camaraderie, of being a team. I don't want to go far as being a family. Uh, that's overkill, if you ask me. But uh, to have this more closeness uh, as uh, an organization, people, this helps uh, an organization work better. That's a valid reason. There's another valid reason. Uh, it's a little um, sometimes um, less spoken of and less understood, but it's that desire to have to to, to build a an environment where there's more innovation. Mm -hmm. This is actually proven that you can do this, and that uh, innovation is unusual in that you have to kind of get outside of your comfort zone, out of your skin, out of your department to uh, pull in different ideas uh, to have breakthroughs, to uh, innovate, to do new things better, to be uh, revolutionary rather than just evolutionary. So they, they want to build an environment to do that. These were two great reasons. Uh, unfortunately, uh, your question goes to what was the trouble then? They just had people come in, for example, for three days a week. And there was no, like, there was no activities or focused attention uh, or very little, or some people didn't, it didn't get to the employees uh, that uh, what to do. And so naturally it did not just come out of nothing. Uh, and so they did not get those. And the employees, the people coming into work were therefore frustrated. Mm. But I mean, uh, you touched upon it. It sounds fair like uh, to have people in the office, maybe that might, uh, you know, increase the chances of innovation. Do you think what went wrong here was that the companies didn't know what to do once employees uh, come back? That's what appears to have happened. Uh, uh, they might have assumed that these things that they desired would have arisen from people just coming into the office. Mm. Uh, and it might have if everybody just came in for five days a week like they did mm. before and it was already um, uh, the 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 culture uh, would have arisen from that and, and there was uh, uh, an agreement from everyone, but that's not what happened. Mm. Uh, they were brought in, not every, everybody wasn't in every day. Uh, so mm -hmm. they might have missed people that they worked with. Uh, another problem was there were no focused programs on, uh, okay, now let's start more uh, team building activities. Let's let's mm -hmm. do that. Here are some things we can do. Um, you know that people were out of the office for so long, I think they got rusty on how to interact with people, how to start right. up conversations. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, I've read articles about, uh, this is actually a real thing right now. Mm -hmm. um, people might feel lonely, but uh, kind of have trouble uh, starting a conversation. Well, that affects workers as well. So mm -hmm. even though they were there, it was not easy for them to do the camaraderie thing. 
Uh, forget innovation. Uh, that yeah. that that means getting out of your comfort zone in the very beginning. So that was mm -hmm. difficult. So that was part of the trouble that um, if employers had thought about it more and started programs to support this and to help transition people from where they were to this really mm -hmm. something new and better uh, in their organization, uh, it would have worked better. People would have been okay. more happy with it. Uh, there probably would have been a little bit of frustration. They couldn't continue to work remotely, but mm -hmm. they would have probably seen benefit and liked more and it just been better overall. But generally, those programs uh, were not seen. They weren't done. Got it. Got it. I'll come back to this, uh, but I'd like to shift to the employee's point of view, right? So do you think there are some reasons why employees do prefer, uh, you know, working from home? and do these reasons impact their view of in-office work, going into the office and working from the office? Absolutely, it does. Uh, they like the flexibility in uh, how they use their day to do work and then to do other things. It might They might have children or better times of day when they were more focused mentally and mm. were able to work better. They were able to do that. There are a lot of reasons why people like working remotely. Um, uh, I know uh, there are a lot of people who are introverts and have uh, not necessarily enjoy every hour yep. uh, when they're in the office with people all around them. Uh, so there are a lot of factors here. Uh, and generally, people started to like working remotely. They figured it out how to mm. do it. They figured the home office. They put it all together. And then all of a sudden, bam, they're asked to come in two, three exactly. times a week. That mm. was very disruptive to their to their plan. Right. Um, so that again, that was another opportunity to maybe um, for employers uh, to uh, maybe help with that transition or ask what would it be better. Because mm. um, uh, if employers asked them to be all day, three days a week, that just crushed any kind yeah. of flexibility. Uh, mm. If employers would have worked to figure out some kind of flexible way to work with employees and that would have taken a little some surveys or discussions up front maybe just the departments to figure out on their own right. some people would have appreciated going in more some less some mm -hmm. at certain times of the day uh, and if you're doing the camaraderie thing you want the team there at the same time right, right. now some people are going in on different days that work for them better they're mm -hmm. not getting with the team just imagine the the resentment that can build up from that. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's kind of made things pretty bad in some organizations and some departments worse than others, some organizations right. worse than others. We're just generalizing here, but mm -hmm. should not be surprised if there's some resentment among employees of this abrupt change they had to make from something uh, that they generally liked. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think you're touching upon this and I'd like to mention that has this turned out to be more of a compliance rather than a camaraderie sort of thing? I'm just I'm just asked to be here twice a week or thrice a week, so I'm there. I don't really care about the camaraderie. I just want to be compliant with the company policy. Exactly. I just want to do the minimum, mm, minimum. to make this work. I have to put mm. up with it. So that's the kind of attitude. That's You don't want that, but that's what can grow from this right. abrupt change without kind of a transition or mm -hmm. support programs to make it work better. So mm -hmm. uh, you get you get things like coffee badging, where people just go in, have some coffee, a little chit chat, and then then leave. You know, they, mm -hmm. they've shown face and then they leave. That's exactly the opposite of what you're looking for is people to enjoy to get together, to use the time right. to get together. Uh, mm -hmm. So they're not being able to do that now. So that's part of the problem. Yeah, I was going to come to coffee badging because that's something <laughs> you mentioned in the article as well. Uh, do you think this is detrimental to the overall team morale and productivity as well if people are just coffee badging in the office and not necessarily spending the time that employers think they will? Uh, it is. It's, it's like worse than... Mm -hmm. Uh, not have done anything, that kind yeah. of situation, doing the minimum, having the resentment, 
uh, you're now you're just going in for a little bit. You're having to drive all the way to work. That right. um, people started to enjoy not having the uh, commute before. People mm -hmm. didn't question a commute. Now they start. You know, this is you know, part of my day. It's causing me stress to go through the commute. It started to become an issue where it kind of wasn't before. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is making things worse. The resentment uh, worse when they're trying to do just the minimum coming in the office, just the office turns out to be the problem. The commute is the problem rather than right. part of a solution, part of a, a, a better way. It's worse. It's like something they don't like. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I want to add here, and I'd love if you have a comment there as well. Um, there are like global teams, right? And uh, teams might be sitting in different time zones. And because of this whole work from home uh, culture that we had, uh, it was possible that teams were taking calls at odd hours uh, because, you know, uh, it, it was a global team, it was remote teams, and they were okay doing so. They were okay taking a call at someone sitting in India, speaking to someone in the US. The, uh, the person in India is okay taking a call at 9 p.m. Uh, his or her time. Now, if you're asking this person to go to the office during the day and then come back and take a 9 p.m. call, uh, that's where this whole uh, another thing that, you know, came up on the Internet and became pretty popular was if I'm going to the office and working from office, I am not going to work from home and I'm not taking that 9 p.m. call. What do you think about that? Exactly. That is exactly the kind of situation that, uh, I think generally employees didn't take into consideration and should have in that kind of transition. They should have asked, you know, not every um, worker has that kind of situation. I did. My, I had to work with teams in India in, in the, the final years of my nine to five job. Uh, mm -hmm. I had to work with teams in India, worked with them in the morning and then right. uh, on uh, more Western time zones in the afternoon or evening. Uh, and that was just par for the course. It was much easier for me to handle if I did that at work, at home. If I was mm -hmm. working from home, I could manage my schedule to get all that in less in a less frustrating way, mm -hmm. uh, more flexible. That was good. Right. So you're exactly yeah. right. And that's just one example of a, a particular uh, type of work, uh, different groups of people, technology might be different from marketing, might be different from human resources, mm -hmm. might be different from uh, other kind of creatives. Um, but still, uh, they should have been, uh, their uh, needs should have been incorporated into a transition plan. And it might have been focused on different departments and how they worked, how mm -hmm. often they came into work, when they came into work, what was right. being asked for them in the office, etc. That's exactly the kind of very practical example of uh, how things went wrong and kind of points to a way to have done a better transition and perfect. return to office. Perfect, perfect. So uh, one of the things that you suggested in the article was, uh, now we are talking about solutioning here. So one of the things that you suggested was adding activities to build repo and solve problems. Uh, are there any specific activities or any strategies uh, that may have proven effective uh, based on your experience? Yes, I had some ideas. Now, what uh, the uh, blog post was about was uh, how you can kind of start to fix this problem. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> there might have been a, a problem created outside of your purview, but you can do something about it. Uh, if, if you're a project manager, scrum master, anyone leading people, you're, you're living with this resentment now. Right. You're living with the frustration. You're, you're trying to get work done uh, and make sure your team, the people you work with, are, are uh, enjoying the work uh, mm -hmm. in some way happy and not um, resentful and not wanting, you know, uh, grumpy. Whatever you want to say, this is not a good way to uh, have your team to be productive, to have their highest performance. They would like to do that. Um, mm -hmm. so it, it might be incumbent upon you to do something. And I figured that if there were the two things they were asking for, uh, this camaraderie and the innovation, there might be two sets of activities that you could organize around. 
The first mm -hmm. one is a little bit more easy, the, the team building and camaraderie. Uh, if we're saying we're coming to the office and you have people uh, there together, or you would plan to have people there together and at least have an event where you can do team building. Now, mm. this is well known, just different kind of activities for team building and things like that. We don't have to go into too many details around this because a lot of people already know these, but now's the time to do it. And there might be mm. things that are easier to do when you're face to face. It's a little bit more intimate. Uh, you can see the reactions and the body language of people better, and you can laugh together. Uh, you can commiserate about the difficulties there and kind of build uh, your team to know each other better, to like working each other better, to kind of, you know, the this enemy you have uh, as a team of this situation you're in, you can kind of say, okay, we're in it together, though. Let's make the best of it. How can we work better doing this? And then you give them the control. See, mm -hmm. they're not feeling a lot of control now. They're being asked to do things without mm -hmm. their input, uh, drastic things that affect their life. Give them the control. Uh, no matter what activities you have, you want them, you might provide a list of things you can do. Let them choose. Let them run with it. Uh, let them uh, have most control to do the activities that they want to do to build the team and then figure out what to do next. What uh, what it makes them feel better uh, is another team building activity to kind of work on the schedule and when they do come in so it makes sense to them where they can uh, do some work together at those particular times and focus on that. Is that the best way to have everybody in and to use the bet time wisely? That makes work time better. That's what you're yeah. trying to do, how you can make it better. But those two things you're after. So that's team building and camaraderie right there. You're, you're doing it. Uh, you're helping out uh, uh, solve that problem that, uh, that was lacking in the transition uh, into return to office. Mm -hmm. um, excellent answer there. Um, I think uh, one of the things that you also touched upon was uh, communicating successes to management. Uh, are there any best practices of how you can, you know, present these improvements to ensure that, you know, these are recognized and these are supported uh, at the higher management level as well? Yes. Uh, uh, and that's, you definitely want to do that. Thanks for bringing mm -hmm. that up because you don't want to do this in a vacuum and yeah. you're trying to improve your career. Uh, and I'm saying if uh, the hammer is being put down from the highest levels of the organization, right. 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 everybody is going to be aligning to that. So any uh, imagine your manager who's uh, and and that manager's manager who are frustrated at this situation, just like you are. If you say, Oh, look what we've been doing. Um, uh, we've been doing some activities to improve camaraderie like was desired by the highest levels of leadership. We've been doing it. Uh, we haven't been resisting it. We've been doing it. We have a meeting every week, every two weeks, every three weeks where we have some team building. And you're, you're doing this in your regular report or discussions with your manager. You know your manager is going to be talking to your manager, it's going to go up. People are going to know that's what you're doing. Hey, I want to get my teams to do this. So suddenly you're a leader if you're just doing this. And all you're doing in this case is having the normal, uh, nothing unusual kind of camaraderie team building activities. But you're telling them you're doing them now uh, in the uh, under this umbrella of wanting to do this kind of team building uh, that, so that's a real, that's a big sell. That's a big deal that you mm -hmm. can do to uh, sell yourself uh, and your support of the organizational strategy. And you're, you might be a voice in the wilderness here all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. And, and that I'm, I'm believing that uh, if you just explain what you're doing and you're, you feel excited about it uh, and it's working, the team is uh, happier. Um, you can report on that. Uh, that's going to be a big deal for your a career career building activity. Love it, love it. So now, I mean, while all that sounds really good, it is possible that as leaders, as project managers, we are going to face some sort of resistance as well, uh, considering the resentment that you spoke of. How do we deal with such resistance? 
Right. All, we're in the situation now with the resentment and the people having a hard time. So uh, what this idea of giving them control uh, and then uh, they're going to like it. They're going to they're going to key on that. They're going to that's going to attract them to your view. You remember, you're an influencer here. Right. You can't really direct them to do things otherwise you're still part of the problem but if you facilitate discussions and you influence them and give them ideas on what you could do uh, and how it might make their lives easier and part of your um, activities are figuring out a better schedule that works for everybody you try to make it flexible you're fixing their problem that's yeah. going to attract them to you so any resistance they have which is initially going to be not wanting to do anything at all, uh, something similar. Uh, it, it'll be more like, ah, uh, a, a light at the end of the tunnel, maybe. You're you're mm. uh, part of the solution. That's going to attract uh, the discussion and help them work, uh, see a path forward and work with you. That's what you want. Give them control. Give them ideas that they can work with. And uh, then let them know that, hey, uh, I can explain this. I can report this to our manager to say that we're doing this consistent with the highest levels in the organization. So we're going to look better. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and you're helping them with their career uh, uh, communication, right? Their career advancement. They're going to like that. There's a lot of positives to this approach to get beyond this resistance. You're actually not doing something separate. You're actually fixing their problem that's mm -hmm. causing them to be uh, uh very much un uh, frustrated with the situation. Right, right. Perfect. So good. Uh, I think uh, this. I really wanted to have this discussion, uh, and I love the the entire article as well. I'll try to link it in the description of this video as well, because as project managers, and uh, Joe touched it beautifully there. As project managers, we don't necessarily always have the authority to take decisions. We can only influence. And if we are in this situation and we are able to influence uh, people uh, and, and you know, just show the positive side of things that it in itself, and then obviously uh, relay it to the higher management, then that, that in itself is a great uh, feat right there. Uh, thank you so much, Joe, for taking the time out. Uh, how can someone contact you? I'm available on projectmanagement.com. The link that I think you'll provide goes to my blog, but I also write articles there. Uh, and uh, you can comment to my articles or contact me directly through projectmanagement.com. It's probably the fastest way. Perfect, perfect. It was great talking to you, uh, Joe. Thank you for taking the time out today. I'm sure the PMC Lounge community will definitely enjoy this conversation. Thanks again. Thank you. Enjoyed it.